Most holy and heavenly Father, we come saying thank you, Master, for this day, this moment, this hour, Father God. Father God, I ask you bless this message as if you were blessing food to be prepared to eat, which it is. Under the guidance of Pastor Todd Atkins at the Great Salem Institutional Baptist Church. The Bible study this day is about Psalms 1, or the truly happy man. I'm going to bring it to you briefly out of three different segments. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. The first segment is going to be coming out of the New Revised Version. And it reads, Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, they mediate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. Coming over into the NIV, how happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in the pathway with sinners or sit in the company of mockers Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction, and he mediates on it day and night. Psalms 1 is, is, is giving us a glimpse of what the life of a happy, godly man should be, should be like. And also it's giving us a glimpse of what the ungodly, unhappy man is like. To examine the blessings blessings of the righteous in the stark contrast to the desperation of the wicked. To know both negative and positive elements that lead to truly happy life. In other words, what the, the psalmist is trying to exemplify is life without Jesus Christ or life without God, which is Jesus, is not only unethical but unholy. And it tries to, uh, if you will, encourage a life of holiness. It's not always easy. But this is a summary. The first Psalms, direct, direct in style, serves as an appropriate preface to the entire collection of Psalms. Its theme can be described as the truly happy man, as it depicts the blessed, blessedness or happiness of the righteous man in contrast to the wicked. Amen. The blessedness of the righteous man is described first from the negative perspective. In other words, the psalmist is giving a negative perspective of a, a unhappy situation. And then it turns around and gives a positive perspective of a happy situation within a negative, within a negative, negative gamut. With the aid of star-like progressiveness, parallelism, 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 the truly happy man is depicted as not allowing himself to be in the presence or under the influence of the wicked. Instead, he finds delight in mediating, day and night, studying, conversing, contemplating spiritually with the Lord. He, he, he begins to, this, 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 this doesn't happen overnight, saints. This takes time. That's why the Bible is here to, to give us insight on how to, to do this. It's not an easy thing. As time goes on, you begin to mediate and, and start thinking of ways to please God. His blessedness is pictured as a healthy, fruitful tree, 
and nourished by rivers of water. In other words, nourished by prayers, rivers of water, contrast, dealing day in and day out with Jesus, talking to God, just dealing day in and with, with, with whatever goes on, mediating with him, talking to him. Let me take it down just a little bit further. The perfect man. The blessed man is contrast to ungodly man. The psalms which opens the Genesis opens the Genesis section begins with the man instead of the mortal universe. The blessed man here is not the first Adam, but the last Adam. He is not an ideal, ideal garden of Eden, but it was in the midst of the ungodly sinners and the scornful. Practice of the blessed man. Power of the blessed man. Rivers of waters is the word of God. Blessed man walketh not in the counsel of ungodly. Basically, as I began to come to my close, if you will, as it is difficult to try to maintain a social distance, if you will, between the being a blessed person and uh, dealing with ungodly situations. We must seek him. In other words, the psalmist is, is telling us that we must mediate with God. We, 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 we must com converse with God. We, 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 we must daily, hourly, secondly, instantaneously, all time. My mom always bring up my mother. She always says, Jay, man, I ought to always pray. Praying is talking back and forth, mediating with the Father. I'm going to leave you with some small keynotes. The blessed, blessedness of the righteous man, his character, described from a negative point of view, walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners. Proverbs 4, 14 and 15. Nor sits in the seat of scornful. Psalms 26, 4 and 5. Just to name a few. His delight is in the law of the Lord. In God's law, he mediates day and night. His prosperity, like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Psalms 92 and 12. This has been Reverend Jonathan Sanders at the Great Salem Institutional Baptist Church under the guidance of Todd Atkins, our pastor. Thank you. Nothing like the righteous. The ungodly are not so. Not so are the ungodly. They are like the shaft which the wind drives away. In other words, the ungodly does they, they it's not so insignificant to say that they don't want to do right. They, the ungodly is just what it said. God makes everything user friendly. He always has. Ungodly means just what it says. Ungodly. You know, it, it, it's not that you won't take a drink or you won't take a drink of beer, but you have a conscience that if I drink too much of this or I drink it in the wrong aspect or in the wrong context or in the wrong area, area, area then that's ungodly. And if I do it in the counsel of the ungodly, in other words, in the seat or in the confines or in the atmosphere that's not holy, that's ungodly. So in other words, I'm placing myself within the hands of danger. This is what the psalmist is trying to get us to understand, that if we counsel with God, converse back and forth with him, he can keep us in the safety net. It's not that we won't be around surrounded by sin. Let me take a step further. The ungodly shall not stand in judgment. 
The sinners shall not stand in the congregation. Take a point look at that. At that very state, those two statements, that's telling those of us who know, that's telling us that the ungodly is like puke, cold coffee. However you want to put it, this tastes good. waste. The sinners shall not stand in the congregation. Oh, wow. In other words, you die and you leave this earth in sin. And you don't even get to stay in the way. You don't have a waiting, a waiting room for you. There's no waiting room for you. You stay in the muck. You don't even get to wait in the waiting room with the uh, with, 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 with with those who at least try. Take it a step further. A final contrast between there are two ways. It's like A and B selection. Hello, goodbye. Kindness and severity. The list goes on and on and on about these two ways. But basically it's touching on happy and unhappy. Being ungodly no matter how happy you may seem, no matter how much money you may have, no matter how many material things you may have, if you're ungodly, you're unhappy. But on the contrast, happy, you cannot have any money. You can have not have any material things, be homeless, but you have God, and you're happy as a Betsy bug. I know, I've experienced that. You see, what this is saying, what Psalms 1 is letting us know, which Psalms, it's about singing praises to God. Psalms 1 is letting us know that if you're happy and you know it, say amen. Simple, simple logic. Take it a step further. The Lord knows the ways of the righteous. What are you talking about, Reverend Sanders? He knows. Okay, put it this way. With man, a prior lips say anything. But God knows the heart. Hey, he created us. He knows the hairs, every little hair on your head. God knows the ways of the righteous. The way of the ungodly shall perish. He won't even tolerate the ways of the ungodly. He, he, he don't even, <laughs> let me tell you something. To be honest, to be straight up, if you're not covered by it, the blood of his son, he don't even look at you. He don't even see you. It's time now for us to shoot, stop sugarcoating stuff. I'm just going to tell it just like it is. You're, you're lost without Jesus Christ. Basically what Psalms is telling us. Take it one more step further. What are the main points of this song? The blessedness of the righteous man, the desperation of the wicked, the final contrast between their two ways. Contrast. Let's touch on that for brief. Contrast between their two ways. Well, the ungodly seeks attention. Wow. The godly has attention. <laughs> Dynamic. Well, what do you mean, Reverend Sanders? The ungodly seeks attention. In, attention. Well, if you have the, this world's attention, you're seeking attention because you're seeking you, you're seeking attention that doesn't have any weight. But if you have God's attention, then you have some attention that has some weight. Then you have some attention that's meaningful. Then you have some attention that's got some action with it. Then you have some tension, attention that's motivated, charged up, power on. It's game on in God's way. What is the theme of this, of this song? As I stated in the beginning, the translation of it is the truly happy man. Because, put it this way, from my own personal experience, I like to keep it real. I was never truly happy until I became happy with 
myself. And being happy with myself is when I became to the realization that Jesus is the great I am. So when I really came to the realization that he is, he is, he exists, he's real, I became happy no matter what standpoint I've been in. Sick, broke, lonely, I'm happy. Because I know that Jesus loves me. And he also loves you too. I'm going to take it just a, a big step further. What is the style of this song? Designed to teach or instruct? Yes, no, hello, goodbye, bad, good, teach or instruct. Any type of way you want to lay the toast on the, in, on, on the plate, Psalms 1 has got it. What does the blessed man not do as described in this song. Does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Does not stand in the path of the sinners. Does not sit in the seat of the scornful. What example of our parallelisms, our thoughts, rhymes, do we find in verse 1? Start like progressive. parallel or situations that line up with each other. Truly amazing situations. Well, what are you saying, Brother Sanders? That's kind of far-fetched, isn't it? My mother always tells me, even today, even now, in today's time, Jay, to understand a supernatural God, you have to have a supernatural mind. What I'm asking you today, saints, open up your mind. Step out from what you're used to, the norm. Even in the seriousness of this pandemic, if you really know and you really believe that God is, then you know that you're protected. You're covered by the blood. One tidbit more. What is the source of delight for the one who is blessed? Amen, somebody. The law of the Lord. God does not place man against man and find man at all. God places man up against a righteous being himself, then finds man at fault, by far. So with that being said, we needed something that we could not gain or obtain ourselves. We'd never be able, we would never be able to. We needed his son. So with that in Oh, amazing, powerful love, which love is a work, love is action, love is a do, love is a go, love is not just a say, love is a logos, let there be, for God so loved the world, action took place, that he gave, let there be, let there be light, action took place, light was, let there be man, action took place, Man was, man is. What's, what does the blessed man do to experience such delight? As I stated, in the law of the Lord, day and night, mediate. Enoch walked with so close with God that he, he took him. <laughs> he walked so close. Walk, walking with God, mediate with him, talk with him, daily. Sometimes, uh, 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 pastor, I, 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 when I don't talk to my pastor, it, 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 it just really just, yeah. but when I talk to him, I'm like a, 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 a puppy that sees his mouth. My tail is just wagging because I get a chance to talk to the man, the angel of our church. The man of God. The true man of God. So counsel, mediating with the Father. Mediating with the sources that he delivers. Mediating in his gamut. In his, find yourself associated, rubbing shoulders with somebody that wants to do right. 
at least if they at least be found trying to do the right thing. And I'm not talking about puppetry, not puzzleism, not fakeism. Because remember this, God knows the heart. So we must be true. Our hearts must be contract. Contract. We must have a contract heart. It's just like giving a check. You write a check, the check has to be validated. God validates the heart. So you can say what you want to say, do what you want to do, act like what you want to act. But if your heart is not pure, God knows it. And in the Old Testament, if we were living in the Old Testament, <laughs> wow, all, a lot of us would be dead right now. Because judgment would take place right there. Thanks be to God that we're living under the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And a lot of us don't have a contrite heart. But because of his son's blood, he allowed, in the song, he allowed, he allowed us just one more time. One more thing. What does the blessed man do to experience such delight? Mediates in the law of the Lord day and night. What examples of prayer, prayer? Being together or thought rhyme do we find in verse 2? Synonyms, uh, uh, situations of rubbing shoulder to shoulder with godly people. Find yourself, finding yourself in the midst, delighting in the songs of God. Thank you, church, for listening.